Hi, and this is Mike Garner from MrMikeGarner.com coming to you with another outside broadcast, another nugget of wisdom, a tip to help you overcome the obstacles that stand in the way of your health, happiness and success. And it's a beautiful day here in Thailand. I think I'm catching the sun. At the moment I'm broadcasting from Thailand from my project in Hua Hin and I want to offer you some insights which are very relevant to me at the moment as I go through transition. I want to share my learning and the nugget of wisdom today is that the world is as you are not as it is. In other words as you see the world you'll be reflecting, mirroring how you see yourself and the way to see a different world and to experience a different everyday lifestyle experience is to shift the way that you experience yourself and you think about yourself. Because all the time, basically what we're doing is we're making judgments, interpretations, decisions, we're evaluating, evaluating, rationalizing, analyzing. And it all starts with us because life is our experience. It's subjective not objective. Objective means it just is an object. That is a bottle of water. It's an object. Um, but the way that I see it is subjective to me. So if I'm in fact thirsty, then I see that as something very welcoming. If I actually don't like water or if I don't need water, then it's the opposite to me. Looking at the image on that bottle of water, there's a nice little wave there. I can interpret that wave based on what I think about waves. Some time ago in Thailand, there was a massive tsunami. People who were caught up in that tsunami, people who died in that tsunami, who had people who were killed in that tsunami, might have different perception of water, a fear of water, a hatred of water, um, based on that experience. Now I wasn't there, um, I helped in the relief efforts, but I like water. I have a swimming pool here, I live by the sea here, and my house in the UK is by the sea. I love the sea, water, the ocean. But can you understand that your decisions about things are subjective based on your experience? If you look at a picture, a piece of art, you'll make an interpretation. And what you're doing all the time is your interpretation is based on the files in your mind, your experiences. You'll be going into your mind to make sense, to make meaning, meaning making of the image, the artwork, the piece of art, the sculpture, whatever it is that you're looking at, to see if you like it, if you don't like it, what it means to you, what it invokes, what it creates for you, how it makes you feel. Now. That's exactly what happens in the world. The world is a big picture. It's like watching a movie at the moment. I'm looking at our guest bungalow, a pool, a garden, the hills, the sky, the scenery. And as I look at it, I'm subconsciously and consciously making decisions I'm experiencing it through my five senses, touch, taste, sight, sound and smell, which is pleasant. And I'm going into my memories to see what decisions I've made about hills, swimming pools, gardens, blue sky in the past. And that's going to make me make a decision about how, how I feel in the now. 
So, also, let's say, for instance, that I was looking at a lady on a sun lounger with a guy swimming past. Now, I could make an interpretation that's a happy couple. She's relaxing. He's swimming. I could also make an interpretation that they're not talking to each other. That's an aeroplane going over. I'll keep talking. That they're not talking to each other. I could make an interpretation that she's being lazy. He's being proactive. I could make an interpretation that that's a real happy scene. I could make an interpretation that they're not talking to each other. Where would those ideas come from? I would suggest that they would come from me based on my experience. What we tend to do is we look at a picture, as we view a scene, as we walk into an environment, we put an interpretation on it based on what's going on in our life. We transpose our own experience into everything that's external to us. Our internal experience has a massive effect on how we experience and explain and perceive our external world. That's very important because it means that two or three people could be looking at the same thing and having completely different internal experiences of it. They could be, one person could be enjoying it, one person could be neutral to it and one person could be annoyed or angry about it. It's nothing to do with what you're looking at. It's to do with what's going on in your mind and how you perceive it based on what's going on in your life. So really the external world is different for everybody. Although we're looking at objects, it's not objective, it's subjective. I wanna take this one step further because at the moment, there's a lot of people in fear and worry and anxiety and stress and, and displeased, uneasy, about the violence in the world, about the wars and the conflict, the racism, the sexism, the murders, the rapes, the child abuse, the theft, all the stuff that we know that's going on, the refugees, the pending wars, the current wars, the abuse. Now, Going back to what I said about your external experience is based on your internal experience. A lot of people think, well, I'm okay. The violence is over there. It's nothing to do with me. It's in that country. It's those people. It's that group of people. It's that religion. It's that culture. It's them. But the reality is, is that we know that if we shift ourselves, then the external will shift because we live in a oneness, we're all connected. Taking that aside, we, in our everyday life, can remove the violence in the world by addressing the violence that's within us. If we are easily frightened, we see a frightening world. If we are happy, we see a happy world. If we are angry, we see an angry world. If we are loving, we see a loving world. It's very hard to admit that we are violent and that's why we see a violent world. But we are. But sometime in our evolution, in our upbringing of consciousness and energy and matter. We compete against each other to keep up with the Joneses, to keep ahead of the crowd, to keep your head above water, all these things. We try our best, doing our best, to survive. And quite often, 
we do that at the expense of other people. Everything is micromanaged in business. We have league tables at school and universities and we compete against each other instead of working together. And our ego tells us that we're separate from everybody else and I am me and you are you and we're not the same, but we are the same. We are part of the human race, a massive family. And that separation from each other created a violent rift. It was a tear that, that's ended up with north and south divides, black and white divides, racial divides, spiritual divides, cultural divides, religious belief, uh, belief divides, national divides, educational divides, financial divides, um, class divides. We, we've split up. And the other tear, which was violent as well, which has an effect on the world, is the separation from ourselves, that, that our ego, which we tend to run from, ego, E-G-O, edge God out, <laughs> has separated for us from the oneness from each other and also the oneness from the Creator. Now, I'm not going to start to get religious on you because I'm not religious and I'm not into dogma and I'm not going to Bible bash you either. But if you watch any of my videos, any of my tutorials, or you know me as a person, or you've listened to my audios, then you'll know that I believe in the oneness and the spiritual connection between us all. And that separation from source energy, where we go it alone, edge God out, created a violent rift. And ever since then, we've been trying to fight our own battles, stand up for ourselves, do the best we can, and we beat ourselves up, and we have a heck of a lot of negative thoughts, self-sabotaging thoughts, unworthy thoughts, negative thoughts, which is what I call intellectual violence. This intellectual violence has a real impact and radiates from us. It affects us within, we create a jittery body, and we create a jittery world, and that vibration plays out into becoming a world of war, conflict, horrors. When we can find peace of mind in here and be at peace with one another, I believe this projection that we see the world to be will calm down, will balance and will literally create heaven on earth. So when we say that the violence is over there, it's nothing to do with me, it is to do with you, it's to do with us all, and it starts with you and it starts with me. Whatever belief system you pursue, it should make you feel happy. We're all seeking, well, not all, but if you're on a mission, which is possibly why you're listening to this and you're 13 minutes into it, so thank you for putting up with me. But if you're listening to this, you're seeking knowledge, gnosis, and enlightenment. And enlightenment should feel light, enlightened, bright, white, buoyant, happy, make you smile, give you peace of mind, and remove this inner conflict, this intellectual violence. If it isn't, then I would say that you're worshipping at the wrong altar. So, over the next few days, weeks and months, clear the debris of all the inner violence, the intellectual violence, the inner turmoil, all the conflicts in your life. And if we all did this by the process of critical mass, hundredth monkey syndrome, which I've talked about before, but you could Google, we as a collective within the oneness, the human race, can remove the violence in the world we can create peace within and then externally by vibration create a peaceful external experience within the world, the planet, the universe for everybody. If you want to know more about this, then I'm here to talk to you. You can get hold of me 
on any of the contact details where you're viewing this presentation currently I'm in Thailand so you'll get me if you want to email me mike at mrmikegarner.com but you can inbox me you can get me on Twitter Vimeo YouTube Facebook WhatsApp a whole range of ways just put Mr. Mike Garner or Mike Garner Reiki Mike Garner Hypnosis into Google and you'll find me and I'd love to chat to you about this inner peace will create world peace it shifts the planet because it says in ancient texts that the world that we see is a mirror of me the world that you see is a mirror of you and if you change yourself and find peace within and we all do it as a collective we'll create world peace and really this these wars these this violence these extremists everything that we're horrified about and puts us into fear we need to send it love and we need to find peace with it because the more that we react with fear and hate and horror and shock the more we add to the vibration of hate and horror and fear and shock and we'll, we'll, we'll stoke the fire if you like of hell on earth don't do that be loving, be lovely be peaceful, be kind smile and, um, and as a collective we can, we can shift this God bless, bye for now